This project is a connecting rod and it gives us an opportunity to explore the effective use of sketch planes as well as the use of mirror in both sketching and in features. I've started a new part studio in millimeters. I'll start a sketch on the front sketch plane and I want to establish the distance between the two end circles on my connecting rod. So I'm going to get a line, make this a construction line, which will eventually be a center line. I'll stretch that coincident to the origin and to the left for 200 millimeters and end that line. Now each of the ends of this line will be a center point. So I'll use a center point circle on this end the hole is at a diameter of 25 millimeters and the outside is 35. On this other end it's going to be a arc. I'm going to use a center point arc because I know the origin will be the center point. I want it to be vertical to the origin so we will stretch this around and make it vertical to the origin again. The outside line has a radius of 30 and the inside line will do the same thing vertical and has a radius of 25. Now I need to close these ends so I'll use the line and snap it to the endpoints of those lines to create a closed region. Using my line command I'm going to sketch the upper part of my uh, connecting feature here. I have a vertical line coincident to that point, another a horizontal line, a vertical line, and I want this to be coincident with my starting point over here at the end of the arc, and I'll also have a line going to the left and I'll escape my line. Now I want to dimension these so this is 15 millimeters going up, this is 15 millimeters going across, and this line segment is 7 I also have a line that is parallel to my center line for making the middle portion and I'm going to dimension this. Now I can use the center line as part of my dimensions. And when I do that, you notice that when I drag below the center line, it's showing me a total width uh, of a symmetrical uh, measurement. So in this case, I'm adding a dimension that includes the portion both above and below the center line. In this case, I want the total width to be 25, and I can dimension. 225 and it equally divides that above and below. So now I have to add some arcs in here. I'm going to use a three-point arc. I don't not sure where the center is, but I know that my arc needs to go from this point to this point. And notice that as I stretch it, it will snap when I get to a tangent point. So I'm going to click and accept that tangent. In this case, uh, on this end, the radius should be 30, and that's created. I'm going to do the same thing on this end. I need to be one point of my arc, and another point of my arc needs to be coincident to this circle, and it snaps in right here. I can see the tangent that's created, and this is a 22 millimeter arc, but I see that the line remains blue. That means that it is undefined. So let's look. I'm going to turn on the constraints and I see that it has a coincident, but the tangent doesn't seem to be applied. So I'm going to get a tangent from this arc to this circle, and now that's fully defined. Now the upper half of my object is completely defined, 
and this is a symmetrical object, I'm going to mirror this on the center line. So I'll select my center line. Uh, and now I can select the features. I'll use a uh, crossing window at this end to grab these two. And I see them generated down here below. And I can click on the individual items that I want mirrored. And I can see that creates the region for this central section. So I will right click and escape mirror to accept that. With this done, I'm going to right click and confirm the sketch and change my view to isometric. Using my extrude tool, I'll create a feature for this rounded end and this rounded edge of the, of the uh, connecting rod on both ends. I want to use a symmetric, so I'm extending on either side of that front sketch plane, and this has a total width of 25 millimeters, and that looks right, so I'll accept that. Now, to reuse the other sketch elements, I'm going to turn on the visibility, clicking on the eyeball there in the feature list, so that I can see my sketch. And in this case, I'll use Extrude again. I want to add material. I'm going to pick this profile. Again, I want to be symmetric to that plane. It wants to know the scope. I'm going to say Merge with All, so that it merges with those previously existing. And the total thickness here is going to be 12. Hit enter to view, and that looks right, so I'll accept that. Next, I have a slot shaped uh, recess on either side of this part. I'll start a sketch on this surface. I'll view that normal to the sketch plane. And I want to use my sketch tool, which requires a center line. So I'm going to get a line construction, make this coincident to the origin, and horizontal. I'll click once to add a start and end point. And for my dimensions, the slot center to center is 100 millimeters. And from the center point of this circle on the end to the uh, to the slot is 40 millimeters. With that defined, I can go up and under offset I have my slot tool. We'll click on this center line. And to define this, this has a radius of 7.5 or a diameter of 15. And that creates the sketch of the slot. I'll accept this sketch and now use my extrude and in this case I want to remove material. It will be blind and have a depth of three millimeters and that creates that recessed slot. I'll accept that. Now that it has the same recess slot on the other side. I can mirror not only sketch elements, but I can mirror features. So I will use a mirror feature. And in this case, as, as with most features, you need to see what it is that you're mirroring. I have a little drop down menu. I could mirror the part, the feature, or the face. I'm going to mirror this feature and it wants the feature to mirror. Well, I can go over here to my feature list and just say I want to mirror extrude 3, and it adds it, and you can see it lights up. Now for my mirror plane, because we created this symmetric to the front plane, I can use the front plane as my mirror plane. And with that, I can see that it's created on the other side, so I've mirrored that feature. Next, I need to round off the edges on these tabs that will have the screw holes. So I'm going to add a fillet 
I'm going to set this for a radius of 6 and choose these edges to round those off. I'll accept that. And now I need to add the holes. So to do that, I'm going to create sketch and define the holes. In this case, I want to be on the sketch plane that's on the end. We'll view normal. And I want to use this center point to create my circles. I'm going to need to use project or use. And when I click on that top arc, I can see that the center point shows up and is available. So we'll use the center point circle. Here, this is going to be a six millimeter hole. I'll define one down here also and say that these will be equal. So I'll set this hole equal to this hole so that they're both the same. Accept that and use my extrude tool to, in this case, remove the material. We'll choose through all. Accept that. And now we have put these holes through the ends of these tabs. With this, our project is done.